Key ideas, trigonometric identities. Strategies to solve trigonometric identities. Well, this topic needs a lot of practice and I have over 100 examples uh, to back up with. And still I feel that many more could be incorporated to deal with this subject. Well, there's limit to what you should go to, right? Now, but here I'll discuss some strategies with you which will help you solve any trigonometric identity. Any trigonometric identity, okay? That's the key issue. Now, number one is simplify more complicated side of the equation. Trigonometric identity is an equation where you need to prove that left side is equal to the right side. Now always the question is which side to start with. So my suggestion is that look for the side which is more complicated and start with that side. Okay. So let me give you one example. Let us say you have an identity where you have to prove uh, something like this like 1 minus cos x over 1 plus cos x within square root equals to something, right? Now, in that case, this is a complicated side, square root, right? You should start with the left side, correct? Now, that, that is kind of issue, right? Now, second, rewrite trick ratios in terms of x, y, and r. There are situations where we'll give you let let sign A equals to, let us say, y over r. What, that, what do that mean, actually? It means that in a coordinate plane, uh, we are giving you a point, And generally, the point is considered as x and y, right? So let's say we have a point here, and the coordinates of that point are x and y. In that case, x is the adjacent side, right? So if I drop a perpendicular from here, then x is what? x will be this side. y this will, be, will be this side, the opposite side. That is the angle which we are considering, which in this case is angle A. And r is the radius or the hypotenuse. So we have a right triangle somewhere, which is being defined by two points. One normally is the origin, and the second point is one which is being mentioned. So here y is the opposite side and r is the hypotenuse. So if I tell you that find out the values for let us say secant square a minus 2 cot a. Now the best thing is if you are given sine a then from sine a you can make your right triangle. So you know opposite side and the hypotenuse, you find the third side and then use the ratios to figure out what is needed. Okay, So that is how we can solve some trigonometric identities where we need to prove, let us say we need to prove this is equal to this, then this is equal to some value. right? So that value we have to prove correct, for that particular condition. Now there, resolving the ratio or writing the ratio in terms of x, y and r helps. Correct? Even if a simple identity, like how will you prove that tan x is equal to sin x over cos x? That's a very simple, in fact, an identity which we will be using most of the time to prove the identities. But now the question is, how will you prove that tan x equals to sin x over cos x? For that, this is an excellent example. Just take any coordinate, right, and then the ratios, and you can prove it very easily. Third, rewrite the ratios in terms of sine and cosine. This, I think, is the most important step. Now, whenever you get identities, then you'll have terms like you've got secondary ratios, and even in the primary ratios, sine and cosine are the two basic ones. Convert tan into sine and cosine. Convert cotangent, secant, and cosecant into sine and cosine. Let me give you an example here. For example, if you have secant x plus tan x times, let us say, 1 minus sine x. 
right, equals to something. And in this case, it is equal to cos x. Now, to prove this identity, the best thing is write secant and tan in terms of sine and cosine and then try to simplify, you will get the result. Correct? So, that is a very important step. Now, the next one is factor for higher degree terms. Okay. So, wherever you have like a square minus b square, you can always factor them. Correct? And then do it. For example, let me give you one complicated one which we have dealt in the videos and that is to the power of 6. Let's say we have cos to the power of 6x plus sine to the power of 6x, right? And you need to find what this is equal to, right? This is actually equals to 1 minus 3 sine cube x plus 3 sine to the power of 4x, sine square x. So you have to prove cos to the power of 6x plus sine to the power of 6x is equal to 1 minus 3 sine square x plus 3 sine to the power of 4x. Now, in such cases, you should uh, use factoring, right? You should remember a q plus b q formula, which is a plus b times a square minus a b plus b square, correct? And uh, if it is a cube minus b cube, remember this is minus and that is plus. The other two formulas which are a difference of squares are easy to remember and most students do remember them. So let me write down those formulas also here, which is a square minus b square equals to a plus b times a minus b. So always remember this. This is extremely important formula to use. Okay. Now, you know, most of the trigonometric identities can be simplified using Pythagorean identity, right? Which I have written here, but I am including into factor higher degree terms. So basically, Pythagorean uh, identities are quadratic, right? So you have sine square theta plus cos square theta equals to 1. So if you have followed the first this step that write ratios in terms of sine and cosine, and most of the time you will land up with sine and cosine. So for higher degrees also you will have terms like this. Now remember here you can simplify it further. You could write sine in terms of cosine, cosine in terms of sine. For example I can write what is sine square theta? I can write sine square theta is equal to 1 minus cos square theta, right? And now this 1 minus cos square theta can be written as 1 plus cos theta times 1 minus cos theta. So that is the factored form. This is difference of squares and that is one ratio. Do you see that? So you can combine terms and simplify terms using factoring techniques and that becomes a bridge. You know, you see here we can convert sum and product, sum into product form. Do you see that? That becomes a product form. So like this we can do. So you can deal with higher degree using basically these two formulas a cube plus minus b cube or a square minus b square, right? And then using the Pythagorean identity that should help you solve those kinds of problems which could be very complicated at times. Now next is rationalize for square roots. So here the very first example which I took is square root. These are complicated questions. So whenever you have square roots in trigonometric identities, rationalize them. Rationalize means using the property of a square minus b square equals to a plus b times a minus b, correct? Now in this case, if I multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of 1 minus cos x, then in the denominator, I will have 1 plus cos x times 1 minus cos x, which will give me 1 minus cos square x, which can be written as sine square x, right? And the square root of sine square x will be just sine x. So that denominator gets simplified to sine x. Do you see that? And the numerator will be when you multiply by 1 minus cos x, then 1 minus cos x square root times 1 minus cos x square root will give you 1 minus cos x in the numerator, right? So this gets simplified to 
1 minus cos x divided by sin x. You see, so simple. It may look very complicated, but rationalizing helps to solve this, right? And last, I think it's very important issue. Solve both sides only when necessary. Okay, avoid both sides solving. Always solve from one side and get the other side. Okay, unless and until uh, it's a very complicated question. There are a few questions which are evenly balanced out. So those questions could be solved from both the sides, then derive to the middle and prove that well, when A equals to C and B equals to C, then A and B are equal and that's how the identity works. Correct? So these are very important things to consider when you're solving trigonometric identities. And I hope uh, backing up with 100 examples in my videos plus this knowledge of how to solve will help you rather will help you to master proving trigonometric identities. Thank you.